Uh, it's also important, of course, to understand um, what you should do with your mutual fund portfolio. I'm sure many of you, unfortunately, may have had to either trim down your SIPs to adjust your, um, you know, a portfolio because to the cash crunch that you may be facing, or you know, you may be thinking that equities are really not doing much. So let me just redeem some of my mutual funds. Well, let's understand this conundrum then, if you may be facing with A. Bala Subramaniam, the CEO of Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund. Uh, Mr. Bala, many thanks for joining us today on ET Now. You know, like I mentioned, a lot of people today are have either ended ended their mutual funds, that means redeemed their mutual funds, or they've just stopped, you know, um, doing their SIPs either because of the cash crunch or they're very disappointed with what the mutual fund industry has delivered in terms of returns. So why do you think mutual fund investors should get back on the SIP path? See, SAP is something, Vina, while uh, we have seen the trend in the last three, four months, uh, the new trend that had got emerged, uh, people, as you rightly mentioned, they have just passed it only because of the uncertain uh, time. So, therefore, let me keep the money in my bank balance rather than continuing investment. Uh, given the fact that in what way the uh, uh, the future will shape up and so on and so forth. This is, of course, the common concern which comes in everybody's mind. But having seen that... Uh, also admit and, and accept the last six, seven years, mutual fund industries, including ourselves, did a great job in building SAP as the book and SAP way of investing. Is the SAP way of investing to build your longer term purpose for which you are making investments? It's nothing but a goal based investment that one has got. And every individual invests in SAP only with some kind of purpose, uh, keeping in mind how much they should benefit out of it, either for buying a house in the future or for marriage expenses or for the purpose of uh, building, uh, buying a car and, and, and building a house, building a house, planning for my uh, travel expenditure, education and so on and so forth. There are many purposes for which I would make an investment. Therefore, the purpose uh, on the back of COVID, uh, has it gone, has it gone off? Absolutely no. Actually, on the contrary, I got actually, uh, one has to pay more attention, uh, SAP we are investing post uh, COVID-19 and given the fact that you need to still do a lot more work for building your future, and insulate from such kind of risk coming on account of the COVID in the form of building your future through the SAP. That remains. But they have only seen the small trend and that starting it was, it is bound to be there for a few months. Given the fact that the industry has grown quite substantially in the last four, three years, you'll probably see the SAP way of investing is coming back as we move forward. Even the fact, one of the questions which comes from people uh, who want to now invest now, the common question which I get from people is that, uh, should I invest in SAP for three months or six months, given the fact that the market uh, is, has gone up quite substantially? And also, everyone wants to actually put money in, back in the market, having now missed this rally of 20-20% uh, uptake. At the same time, they also nobody wants to put their hair under the market. So, uh, that's common question that comes that, what should I invest, how should I invest in SAP uh, now, spread over one year, uh, or maybe a three months kind of question which comes in. Therefore, when this kind of question comes, I would assume uh, SAP, the purpose remains, uh, the goal for which we are making investment on SAP remains. At the same time, the market in the equity market provides a greater wealth creation opportunity uh, in the long run. That 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 fact and the acceptance also remains. And that being the case, I am very confident SAP way of investing would come back. Okay, understood. You know, Mr. Bala, the one trend that we are observing, especially in this market rally that we've been witnessing or, or you know, the recent market rally that we witnessed was the way mid and small caps came back with a lot of fervor. Do you believe, and, and you know, mind you, that this has also finally led to uh, some bit of optimism on mid and small cap funds finally doing well because obviously in the last two, three years, mid and small cap funds have lost out quite a bit on their NAVs. So do you believe now with this, you know, rally that we're seeing in mid and small cap indices, one should increase their SIPs in mid and small cap funds? Uh, of course, it makes sense um, uh, uh, given the fact that the smaller mid cap sectors, though it has bounced back in the recently, one should also uh, accept the fact that the last uh, three years and five years, uh, especially three years, small and mid cap has been the big underperformer to the market. And that has actually left a huge uh, a huge gap between the large cap performance versus the small and mid cap performance. That itself makes a case actually for this to with respect to the, um, uh, with respect to giving return to the investors. And also having seen that in terms of valuation, small and mid cap companies also got hit very badly. And, uh, and, and, and there's also 
if there is a broader market recovery comes in from the economic point of view, then naturally you will see a greater participation coming from the smaller mid cap companies in the long run. So therefore, it makes sense actually to consider uh, smaller mid cap as a sectors for the SIP. But the point that we made earlier that smaller mid cap seen a small outflow. While it, I want us to look at this inflow outflow with respect to the size of this category. The size of the category today in the industry is large cap is the largest category. Then comes is a multi cap. Then comes the balance fund category. Then there comes actually the smaller mid cap category. But smaller mid cap category in relation to the various categories of mutual funds equity scheme that we have is smaller. Therefore, the number what you are mentioning uh, may look smaller. But one has to look at this number in relation to the size of that segment. You know, Mr. Vala, we are unfortunately seeing a lot of companies struggling to cope with this pandemic, leading them to default on some loans. Um, that in turn is also leading to downgrades. That in turn is affecting the NAVs of, you know, I mean, of course, the, the bigger impact is usually felt by debt funds, but it does tend to impact equities and consequently the mutual fund NAVs and the equity markets as well. Um, so obviously it's something that has caused a lot of worry among investors. We get a lot of queries as well with respect to the same right here on the money show. And I would like to address that. Um, how would you assuage investors about this entire bit? See, I think from an investor's point of view, while, um, uh, while the concern that came in the year 2018-19 uh, was one of the events that happened uh, post-2018 crisis, and that, that's one thing which is very small in nature compared to the size of investment that we all make. Uh, the, what happened and the accident that happened the year 1819 uh, due to the credit event, that's one of the small accidents happened. But having said that, um, in order to ensure the, pro the market stability is maintained and the mutual fund is able to actually function properly in managing the rest of the asset classes. So as I mentioned, the small as a percentage of the total asset that we all manage, whether it is segregated mandate or any credit issues, will be small percentage of that particular uh, schemes, but in an overall thing, if you see, it's very small in size. But having said that, from Minnesota's point of view, any small is also big. Therefore, only the way I think we can actually uh, get over this uh, hangover is one, uh, this one they have accepted is one of kind of event, and second is the, the individual losses would be would be there is very marginal. Therefore, as and when obviously the economic recovery coming back, the fourth security mandate also would come back. Uh, to some extent in terms of recovery, not may not be fully, but I think there will be some recovery which will come. At the extent, whatever the recovery comes, one has to accept that as 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 uh, only that much one could get it. At the same time, the rest of the portfolios are doing well, doing well and providing a greater experience to the investors uh, um, in, in, the, in, 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 the, in the year term. I mean, the game changes from time to time. As long as the investors come to, the, come to the acceptance that I'm making this investment for a longer term, uh, say five, ten years kind of period, this kind of uh, small issue that comes and hits you uh, in terms of uh, in, uh, hits the investor sentiment that will remain as a temporary and the long run, I think this is good character. Okay, um, what is the screening process then that you know the Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC as a whole, the mutual fund house as a whole follows you know before they pick stocks for their uh, you know for the variety of the funds that they have. Yeah. Now, at Sun Life uh, Mutual Fund, clearly uh, 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 there's a set process, the philosophy uh, that we have in terms of screening of uh, companies, both in fixed income and in equity. I think first and foremost uh, comes with respect to the uh, the governance and uh, the way I think the companies are run. Uh, second, of course, with respect to the uh, the earnings, how companies have been reporting the earnings, including the disclosure that they make. And finally, uh, all these companies. Uh, how to have the longer term sustainable business model in order to ensure they are able to create shareholders value. At the same time, they are quite uh, clear about how the balance sheets are being constructed with respect to the right mix between equity funding and debt funding and, and also the future, uh, uh, the growth prospects in which the companies are participating. I think all these things are very important uh, when it comes to the question of building a uh, screening process and selecting companies both in equity and fixed income. That is a fund house having been a uh, part of the industry for the last 25 years and every time uh, we get a new learning on the basis of new learning how the incorporated as part of the risk management practices and then keep building our portfolio and that's why we are managing close to about 2 lakh uh, 50,000 crores of assets and management we are managing it purely as built on the base of the research driven process that as a AMC has built over a period of time. 
Okay, just before we let you go, you know, Mr. Bala, if, if, if I had to sort of talk about, um, you know, how would investors allocate their money, you know, not just between equity and debt, but also within the equity category. You know, you mentioned in your previous answer, there's large cap, mid cap, small cap, multi cap, balance, so on and so forth. Um, how would you recommend they essentially go about allocating their money across the various asset classes? Interesting, uh, I think uh, I'm a firm believer of uh, asset allocations. So whatever one may say, bullish on equity, bearish on debt, bullish on durations, bullish on credit, bearish on credit, these things will keep happening around the year. But that's situational. At that point of time, what do you think is right, given the fact that there are some indicators that are reading it on the basis of you're making a bullish case and bearish case. From an investor's point of view, cannot actually keep doing this kind of exercise all the time while managing the portfolio. Therefore, I always believe that four concepts uh, in mutual fund exist. One, there is a purpose for which you save your money. Uh, that is for the purpose of creating liquidity, which is equivalent to a savings fund like liquid fund. And second is for creating income. That's why I think the income scheme comes over a period of time. You want to generate income as an alternate to a fixed deposit to some extent. And the third, of course, is with respect to the wealth creation, what I mentioned earlier, the SIP, we are building book size. That is for the purpose of building a longer term wealth creation as part of purpose. And third is actual tax planning, uh, which is nothing but investing in ALS schemes to benefit out of Section 8 C benefit. These four components are extremely important while managing the portfolio for every investor, irrespective of whatever the size of the investment they make. And these four components remains constant. And as long as one stick to the four components, and then put your money a little bit in all the five, and then go overweight on the one which is a longer term, and go underweight on the one. on a holistic portfolio, the investor experience will be very good. The investor experience, I suppose, goes for a toss and becomes more volatile. Only when you actually allocate your money, overweight on, too much overweight on, overweight on equity, and too much overweight on fixed income or credit funds, or guild fund, and so on and so forth, then only I think you end up in a mess, and all of us face this problem. Therefore, to maintain the discipline of this concept of investing for the purpose of savings, income generation, wealth creation, and tax planning, and all the schemes that are provided by the mutual fund, I think if you're able to make allocation, I think the experience can be a lot better.